Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about Vietnam. And Vietnam, of course, is my motherland. My parents immigrated from there. In general, if you're curious about Vietnam, I wanted to talk about it being someone who has traveled on their own in the country from all the way down south to all the way up north. So let's get straight into it. So I usually like to fly into the south and fly out of the north just for convenience. Um, if you want to fly out of specific airports, just keep in mind that a lot of the destination spots that you kind of see on the gram or online, the very like beautiful places, usually don't have their own international airport. So you have to take domestic flights in and you usually have to take some sort of ground transportation to get to it. So that being said, I usually fly into the South to see my family, of course. Um, in the South, I haven't been there personally, but I've heard great things is Phu Wok, which is the island area. That's a really great area for people who enjoy the beach um, and that kind of like Southeast Asia beach vibe. If that's not your thing, that's totally fine. You can also explore the South in um, Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon. And there's a lot of really cool, fun things to do but having visited there so often I tend to try to explore new places um, towards the central area. I haven't personally been to I forget the name it's I'm gonna put it right here but that's a really popular destination I might visit there if I go back but one spot that I really wanted to talk about is the Central Highlands area which is Hue which is Hue City it's the original imperial city where the emperor was and the Nguyen dynasty was so I had the pleasure of actually working there for a while myself the dialect is beautiful it's probably one of the most difficult ones to understand if you're from the south I think it's a lot less crowded than the um, south and the north so it's the perfect in between for me some of the top spots that I recommend is obviously the Imperial City this is where you can go in and look at all the different areas within the Imperial City it does cost I believe um, like 10 15 dollars but super cheap Hawaii City is really small so transportation is not too bad I like to use grab which is like motorcycle uber um, on top of that you can also take Uber or a car ride all the way up to Kaiden, which is the tomb. This tomb is super breathtaking, very intricate design all the way up in the forest area. So don't forget to wear, you know, insect repellent so you don't get hit with bugs and mosquitoes. The next spot that I wanted to talk about is the Hiu, which is a pagoda where the famous monk Thich lived and he is known for, you know, Zen Buddhism. But this pagoda is just so beautiful and just very calm and serene and I highly recommend it. It is totally free to go through and I always look for different temples and pagodas to go to when I'm traveling just because I'm Buddhist but um, they're also very beautiful. Please be respectful and wear covered clothing like long sleeves and long pants. I know it's really hot but please please do wear it just to be respectful of the area. The next spot in that general area and just throughout the major cities is Fodibo, which is the walking street of major cities. And they have like great cafe, bustling streets, nightlife, markets, all of that. So moving on to the other central areas of Vietnam, um, very close to Hue City is Hoi An, which is the beautiful lantern city and the photos that you get to um, experience online. It truly, truly, pictures do not do justice it is just beautiful there and you know they have the old french colony yellow walls that they have kept since then so it's a very historic district um you have to take the bus from Hue to get to Hoi An and it's pretty cheap it's like five to ten dollars and it it's a little bit longer because it is by bus but I highly recommend it um if you are also flying from the south then you can get a flight into Da Nang as well which is the other major city near Hoi An and Hue and I'll put a map right here so that you can kind of get a geographical sense but definitely if you want to fly in you can fly into Da Nang and then go to like Hue and um Hoi An to visit and explore 
Speaking of which, in Hoi An, I highly recommend going to Baifo Cafe. They have just like a spectacular view of all the rooftops of the buildings in Hoi An. And um, you can get a coffee and sit there. It is really packed and it gets really hot up there. So I recommend going when it is not crowded, like in the early morning or towards the evening, just not during like peak season. While you're in Hoi An, one of my favorite things to get is this drink called Nuk Mok. And it is the most refreshing lotus drink tea that I have ever had. There's hints of lemongrass, um, cinnamon, lotus. It is lemon. It is just super refreshing and you'll need it while you're there. So stop by that shop and get it. It's like a dollar for a drink. And then of course, just walking around at night in Hoi An is beautiful and amazing in itself. So you don't need to spend money. Um, there's like this cool lake thing that you can walk by or I'm not sure if they do it anymore, but you can also, you know, rent a boat to get on that as well. So moving on, if you are going towards Da Nang, which is the central area, so if you couldn't make it to Phu Wok, which is the island in the south, you can make it to the central area where they have beaches. I got to stop by there for a day and it's just beautiful. Um, if you are gonna go to those famous hands that you see, that walking bridge, highly recommend going really early because it gets super packed. And if you want one of those, you know, IG worthy photos, you can't really get it unless you go um, not during peak hours. So just moving on our way up north, um, one of the places that I really regret not being able to see while I was doing my trip there, which I will eventually get to, is Nanban. This is kind of the lush grass highlands and I highly recommend going to it if you can. There's the dragon walk and it is just so serene and tucked away. I think it's one of the hidden gems of Vietnam, but um, definitely check that out. And then as you're going a little bit more north, you can actually get to Nhân Bân from Hanoi. So if you fly from Hue to Hanoi, just keep in mind that the domestic flights are a lot more expensive within the city expensive um, because that there is no like other major airport or form of transportation. So from Hanoi, you can actually go to Ninh Bình, and the other one is the more touristy, attractive cousin, which is Ha Long Bay. And there you can see the iconic ships with the, you know, avatar looking landscape. And it is beautiful, but I've heard it's very, very crowded. So I haven't made it out yet, but you can make day trips probably like two to three hours one way, depending on traffic, maybe four hours total. There are services that take you to and from, but I highly recommend going on your own so you can experience the scenery while you're getting there. Speaking of the North in Hanoi, you are going to find very city metropolitan vibes, I believe even more so than the South, but it is an experience in itself. You can find hostels and very cheap places to stay there. Um, I recommend getting a lot of the street food, going to Hoang Kim Lake, which is the you know iconic central plaza area of the North. And while you're there, you can you know check out iconic spots like the train tracks. Don't get on them because you'll probably get in trouble by local police enforcement. And you can also check check out the streets. Um, there's a really famous street that has all the different places that the emperor uh, resourced and got his supplies from. Uh, and I will put the name of it here. It's like 23 something, but there's 23 shops for 23 types of materials. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is if you have the opportunity, the capacity, and the time, I highly recommend going to Sapa. Sapa is one of the most beautiful places I have ever experienced and have been able to photograph. And it is just wonderful. I was able to go there with my mother and we spent a few days in Topas Eco Lodge, which is sustainable. It gives back to the local community and it is just breathtaking. So if you want that infinity pool with the looks and the views, that is where you want to go. Uh, if you are there, definitely check out the traditional Red Dao uh, bath, which is the indigenous tribe there. Um, they give you a kind of like spa experience the traditional way with a beautiful view and it's super secluded and they're just amazing there. It is a trek out there. I think it was like nine hours. So you have to take that into consideration and it is a lot more expensive because it's very secluded and hard to get to and it is totally worth the trek that is you know really 
like roads untraveled. So those are all of the places that I wanted to talk about if you are considering checking out Vietnam. I hope these tips helped you. If you like this content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like so that I can create more free content for you all. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.